You have been seeing some super cool 3D prints recently, haven't you? And you want to do the same, maybe as a hobby, or maybe you're good at 3D programs and want to turn your creations into reality. I wonder if that's where Creality got its name from. Or maybe not. What's important is that you made it to the right place. And luckily for you, there are so many websites where you can print free prototypes and figures that look amazing. Like this, and this, and even this. After watching this video, not only will you know exactly which printer you want, but you will be a professional beginner, knowing all the basics to get started and more. And let's try to keep it fun, hey? What do you think about that, Groot? Yeah, you like it? Nice. Okay, so let's cover some of the basics, shall we? Before getting into the 5 options, so you don't get totally lost, first you really need to know about the following. Filament, extruder type, heat bed quality, build size, build speed, slicers, and community size. Filaments are the 3D printer's ink used to create your prototype. They come in many different materials and sizes. 1.7mm is the standard size, and the main types you need to know about are PLA, which is the cheapest and most used, ABS, the sturdiest option used for strength and endurance, which costs a little bit more but emits stinky fumes. Yeah, it smells pretty bad. And TPU. TPU is a flexible plastic. It makes phone cases or mini car wheels or cool origami shapes. There are a few more filaments, but let's not get overwhelmed. Speaking about TPU, that takes us to point number two, extruder types. There are two main extruders, Bowden extruders and direct drive extruders. Printers are slowly moving towards direct drive, but here are the differences. A main difference is that direct drive extruders are capable of using TPU filaments, the flexible ones, much better than Bowden drive. The third thing to know about is the printer bed or platform. It could come as a non-heated bed or a heated bed, the better option. It prevents the printing material from shrinking on the first layers, which otherwise could warp and the whole design will go out of shape like this. This is especially important when using ABS filaments, which require higher temperatures. Build size just depends on your budget range. Next is slicers. Cool name, right? They basically mean programs that prepare your design to be printed out. They offer you choices to add support layers, change object size, rotation, and much more. Don't worry, slicers are designed to be simple, they are not really 3D programs. And each printer has different slicer compatibilities. But here are the three main free slicers. Cura Slicer, probably the most simple one, Slicer Program, and Prusa Slicer. The last thing to mention, and most important, is community size of the printer you choose. Each printer has different communities, they help you out a lot when facing troubles, or when you're trying to add extra features to your printers. Yep, you can actually upgrade printers. That's why top 3D manufacturers remain in the top because their communities existed for a longer time and now are larger in size. I have a chart in the end for each printer and all their important characteristics including community size. Okay, now that you leveled up from a beginner to an apprentice, we can go deeper. If you have any questions about a printer, you can ask in the comments. And to check the latest prices of these printers, you can find that in the links in the description below. So coming up in number 5 is the best cheap 3D printer alive, which is even on a discount. The Voxilab Aquila 3D printer. Voxilab is arguably the second most famous 3D company currently in the market. That means that this printer has a really strong community base and a lot of spare parts and upgrades. At this price range, the Aquila has some impressive features that one would not expect. It has a heating bed, a carbon crystal silicon glass platform, which heats up within 5 minutes, preventing models from warping and deforming. Comes with a resume print function in case power cuts off or filament finishes, saving the last position and continuing from there. Printing noise is below 50 decibels, not bad, and it's made out of metal body, with a printing size of 22 by 22 by 25 centimeters, or the following in inches. Now keep in mind that it's a Bowden tube extruder with a maximum nozzle temperature of 255 Celsius. So although it could print ABS and PTEG, you want to avoid TPU. It's best if you use PLA first though, and then try to use other filaments. A nice thing is that it comes with a simple red filament, but you are most likely going to need to get extra filament, better sooner than later. A sad thing about the Aquila is that it doesn't come fully assembled. This is how it looks out of the box. 
but they provide a nice detailed video on how to assemble it. The more careful you are when assembling, the better quality prints you will get. Notice that the bed is also a manual bed, which means that you will have to rotate the knobs on the corners to make sure that the height is right. It's quite easy to do, you just throw a paper in and make sure the extruder barely touches it. There are some videos on this too. This printer is fully open source, which means that you can use any slicer you want, and it allows for flexible upgrades. Overall, for the price, Aquila provides great features, and has customer service and technical support who reply within 24 hours. You also get 12 months warranty on this option. So, if you are on a tight budget and can only afford the cheapest possible 3D printer, then go for the Aquila. As for the second option coming from KD Technology, the KD X12 3D printer. If you don't want to fiddle around with assembly, this option could be the one for you. At a little higher budget range than the Aquila but still in the lower ranges. This printer is so impressive that some users found it to produce results better than their $2,000 3D printers. Now let's take that with a grain of salt and look at the features it has. First of all, it's a closed printer with an opening at the top, helping to keep children and pets at a safer distance, but also providing the benefit of keeping the heat and odor in the printing area. This extra heat alongside the heated bed helps reduce warp and improve adhesion. The bed is manually adjusted X12 comes with a direct extruder, so it supports ABS, PLA, TPU and most filaments. It even comes with a touchscreen, which is hard to come by at this price range. Now, Kitty has its own slicer, which could be good to make things more simple, but makes you also more limited. Customer support answers swiftly within 12 hours in case you face issues. Somehow they even manage to provide a repair kit and a removal tool to remove prints from the bed. So the only downside of this option is that it has a smaller print size of 15 by 15 by 14.5 centimeters and it's harder to upgrade. Also, although Kitty has a strong community, the community is not as big as the last option. If you are willing to sacrifice build size for higher quality and assembly convenience, then the Kitty X12 is the right option for you. But if you love build size and your logic is the more the merrier, then check out option number 3, the Longer LK Pro. What a coincidence, the company is called Longer and it has the longest machine. Anyways, Longer is the 5th most popular 3D company and honestly, the LK Pro 5 Pro is quite undervalued. I mean, it has a print size of 30 by 30 by 40 centimeters, which is more than double the last option. Normally, 3D printer companies don't make large 3D printers for beginners. This is an exception. Any other printer this big would cost almost double this printer's price. But build size is not the only impressive thing about this printer. A really cool feature is the full color touchscreen, which shows high sensitivity and a friendly user interface. As for the extruder, it's a Bowden drive, making it compatible with filaments of PLA, ABS and wood. Many users switch out of Bowden tube for a direct drive on this option. With a filament detector, the machine knows when you're about to run out of filament, and maximum print speeds are at about 120 mm per second, but best condition speeds are around 80 mm per second. It comes with an enhanced cooling system to better prepare the extruder filament and overall providing a better smoother surface. The longer LK5 Pro also has a resume print option, a new improved heated platform and a great 24-7 customer support with 12 months warranty. Next up is the big boy contender, the underdog, the Focus 3D printer. Newly designed less than a year ago, this printer has risen to fame at remarkable speeds. A key feature in this option is how fast it is to assemble. All you have to do is this. Thanks to the direct drive extruder, you can print using most filaments. Although direct drive extruders normally have a little less stability, the Focus printer was able to improve on that dilemma using a dual Z and Y axis design, a large bottom space and good quality heat bed. But it still has more impressive features like smart filament break detection, ease of use and ease of changing filaments, as well as the improved feature of nozzle clock chance reduction. This is a crazy printer since it's open source and has strong control chip. If you're tech savvy, you will be able to do crazy stuff. If not, no worries, this printer's community is growing 
and you will start to find more and more geniuses who will do that for you. Overall, although the Focus company isn't very large yet, they provide you with great lifetime technical support, and they go far and beyond to try make sure you have no problems at all. Print size is 23.5 by 23.5 by 25 centimeters, and you get a quarter kilo filament spool of PLA+. If you are looking for a long-term printer and are ready to enjoy 3D printing for at least a couple of years, expect the true capabilities of this printer to start shining then. If you want an option never to go wrong with, then here it is. Number 1. The Creality Ender 3S1 Creality is currently the number one 3D printer manufacturer. They have parts everywhere, and the community is huge. Creality itself has fluctuating customer service. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's so-so. But at least the warranty on this printer is one year long. That's quite good. Okay, look, Creality has a lot of printers. As a beginner, you want to mainly look at these four. The Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 Version 2, and Ender 3 Super 1. In reality, you could buy an Ender 3 and slowly upgrade its parts to be equivalent to an Ender 3 S1. However, it requires quite a lot of knowledge and skills. As a beginner, it's much easier to get the fully loaded package in one go. This option is medium expensive, but still Still in a beginner's budget level. If you can't afford the S1 but only want a Creality printer, then I suggest the second best to be the Ender 3 Pro. It has minor upgrades on the Ender 3, making it just in the right spot. Anyways, back to the Ender 3 S1. This printer is the superior version because it has an auto touch bed leveling system alongside a manual one, a new direct dual gear extruder, making it compatible with most filaments. And this extruder also increases accuracy by reducing inertia making positioning better and reducing wobble. Naturally, a superior version will also have filament detection, a power saving mode in case of a power cut. The printer will avoid wasting filament and a high precision dual Z axis. This dual motor design also increases how smooth your print turns out by reducing ridges on the side. The platform is quite a good one too. Made from PC, spring steel and a glass print bed, you even get a toolkit and 200 grams test filament. But once again, Again, 200 grams finishes really fast, so you should get extra filament right off the bat, regardless of what printer you choose. If you can afford a bigger budget, then you should go for this option. It's currently on a discount. The only downside is that it doesn't have an electric screen, and it's not the biggest printer available. Here are the printer dimensions. 22 by 22 by 27 centimeters. Okay, now that we're done with these options, here is a quick overview of all of the five printers to make it easier for you to decide what is better for you. This video took quite some efforts to prepare. I compared more than 40 printers head to head. So, if you enjoyed the video and it helped you out, make sure to give it a like. And if you're interested in more 3D tech, then subscribe to see upcoming videos like this one and this one. That's it from my side. Happy 3D printing, my friends.